should never phase me They watch the steps that I be taking That's why they say that I'm amazing uh, Been the top dog before the nine Since I've always been the public figure Now the frame then got too big Cause most people wanna get up in it Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm your host, John Madsen. This is the show. Welcome to today's show. If you're watching on video, I got this dope red, white, and blue pottery shark. My daughter loves art, so there's this little pottery shop out here in Scottsdale. She loves to go paint pottery, so I went with her, picked a little shark off the shelf, and now it's gonna sit here on my desk because, yeah, shark's a pretty cool animal. But today, we got an important episode. I'm gonna talk about the ultimate thing that's killing your progress. And I'm gonna get right into the episode because this episode is going to hopefully implore you guys to destroy any and all delusion that's living in your lives. And a lot of times when we talk about delusion, we see it in other people, but we don't see it in ourselves. And I know I've made this mistake in the past and I've seen multiple other stories or I've had other experiences in my life where I've seen it in other people. And it's so crazy to me how it's so apparent to me and so out of the other person's awareness. And essentially, I believe awareness and the self-awareness is one of the biggest superpowers a person can have. The more self-aware you are, the more you can notice where you're being delusional is an advantage that will pay off in so many different ways because a lot of people can't see it, right? And I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. When I was a performance coach back in Salt Lake City where I was training high school athletes, a lot of times I'd work with parents and the parents would have this desire for their kids to you know, be the best player on the team or you know, whatever it was in sports. And these parents would come in and they'd pay for their athlete to train. And a lot of times these parents would blame the coaches on different teams for not playing their son or not playing their daughter. And in their eyes, their athlete was a star. But in reality, their athlete was the furthest thing from a star. And as a third party who had no, you know, no dog in the fight, if you will, I'm there to just train their kids and help them improve almost immediately in a lot of situations i could see why their son or daughter was not playing on their high school team or got cut or whatever because they were not great athletes they did not have a good attitude and a lot of times they didn't even want to be there and i used to ask myself because i wasn't a parent at the time i used to ask myself if it was really possible for their parents to not see reality like it was apparent to me or it was apparent to the coach. And I, I, I was like, I don't know. You know, I think that if that was my son or daughter, it would be impossible for me not to see that they actually sucked and not believe in this delusion that they were great. And I'm a parent now and I still feel the same way. I still feel like I've taken my daughter to tennis classes. I've watched her in dance classes. We just had her first karate class and she's trying other stuff. But as a parent, I remember those moments because when I wasn't a parent, I was like, I wonder how it's going to be when I'm when I'm a parent, right? Am I going to be able to see the truth? And that's an interesting story because although it was so apparent for me to see this delusion in other people, there's still moments in my life where delusion has been destructive and this delusion is our number one enemy, right? There was times in business when, you know, business wasn't great but I got to the point where I built the gyms up to doing essentially about 20 grand a month, 25 grand a month. And there were a lot of moments where my wife would ask me to transfer money out of the business into the personal account so that we could pay the mortgage. And I would tell this story that we made 20 grand. We, we did 20 grand this month, you know? And back then, like I, I knew it wasn't great money, but at the same time I was like, you know, it's not bad. And then when she asked to transfer the money, there was no money. And so she would always say, well, where is it? If you made 20 grand, where where's the money? And I would have this story about making 20 grand and feeling good about it until I was faced with the reality that I had to transfer something that wasn't there. And then we dig a little bit deeper and it's like, cool, bro, you made 20 grand and you spent 21 grand. So essentially, 
you made negative a thousand dollars, right? Which would have been the reality. But I was choosing to perpetuate a story that was false. And when I thought about this, there, there's so many different ways in business and fitness that this delusional way of thinking can be the most destructive force in the world because we tell ourselves these stories, right? And the only way to progress though is to get real with the actual truth so that then we have this base starting point so that then we can move towards our, our goals. Right. And so I want you to think about right now where you've been delusional, because when it comes to fitness, I've had multiple conversations with people and much like the dad who brought his high school son or daughter into my training facilities back in the day where, you know, the parents thought that this kid was a star. And it was very easy for me to spot within five minutes that this kid was in fact not a star and not a good athlete and didn't have a good attitude. And no wonder why the fuck their coach didn't put them in the game or he or she got cut. It's the same delusion that a lot of people have when it comes to their fitness. So a lot of times I go to these events or I'm the fitness guy sitting around a a social event at dinner and people will want to talk about their fitness journey, what they're doing right? I bought this Peloton or what do you think about this diet I've been doing? I feel really good. And you know, they'll want to relay this information because they're on this, they're on this journey, right? And the issue that I see nine times out of 10 blocking them like instantly. And I can see this, I can see this immediately because your body is your resume, right? And so if you put your feelings aside for a moment about whatever you're doing, and you just accepted the actual results, they're walking around as a four or five in their body, and they think they're sevens, eights or nines. A lot of times I'll talk to people who used to be former athletes, right? They maybe maybe not a collegiate athlete, but a high school athlete, and they still believe in their minds that they're an athlete, but they're 50 pounds overweight. And they're not an athlete anymore, right? And so so this delusional way of thinking impedes their progress because they already think they're good enough. And if you think you're good enough, your ego doesn't want any help. And if you don't want any help, you keep spinning your wheels because you keep doing the same things that got you to this exact place that you're at right now. So every single one of you, whether you're outside right now walking your dog or you're out in your car driving to work, if you were really to consider how you're playing this game in your body, whether you're a five or whether you're a nine, and this this is you know an opinion that you have about yourself, right? It's it's self graded, but it's if you were really to strip away all the feelings and just get very real with the facts, are you underperforming? Are you average? Are you mediocre? Are you a little bit better than your friends, or are you a fucking savage? Are you a five or are you a nine? And it's okay if you're a five if you know you're a five, because if you know you're a five and you want to change that, at least you've established that there. There's a long way for you to go. I would think this would be easy until I until I had to lateral chunk this back to my business because it's natural for me in the athletic pursuits to know if I'm shitty or good. It's easy for me to know in the fitness game if I'm shitty or good. But in business, I would have this delusion sometimes until I broke it. And so in this podcast, in this video, I really want to challenge you. Like I, I want this podcast to be one of the podcasts or one of the videos that challenges you. Because if I don't challenge you, you continue to do the same things that you've always done and a year goes by and you don't change. And it makes no sense not to change when it comes to your fitness because it's actually super easy to get immaculate results. You might not just know what to do or you might not, or you might very well know what to do. You just don't really do it, right? So so there's multiple reasons why, but the biggest blockage to your progress is you're not willing to tell the truth. And so step number one always has to be like, you have to stop lying, right? You have to go to war with the delusion that that lives inside of you. And so maybe you're, you're watching this podcast right now and you're in fitness. I have a lot of fitness professionals follow me because they've, you know, kind of seen me build this business from afar. And so maybe you're one of those fitness professionals and you're like, yes, John, you're nailing it, bro. Like I have so many clients that think they're better than they are. I have so many people that don't sign up for my program because they think that they're, they're better than they actually are. And you're saying a silent yes to yourself, but I challenge you to take this delusion and apply it to your business. Are you being fucking delusional about your business? Are you being delusional about your level of success? Are you being delusional about your relationship? Are you being delusional about how you're mothering or fathering your kids? Like there's delusion in all these areas. And so I want to implore you 
if, if you're eight or nine or 10 in your body and fitness isn't a problem, I need you to go to war with the delusion in the other areas of your life. Because once again, this, this self-awareness is gonna be the thing that ultimately sets you free. And so before I let you go today, I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I utilize to go to war with the number one enemy to my progress. And it might be in fitness at certain times. It might be, once again, in my business at certain times. Step number one is to face your demons daily. Face your demons. And, and I almost left it at that, but there's this trick that I've utilized over the last 90 days or so. And I got very in tune with this demon on a daily basis, and it's changed the game for me. This is a trick that for all of you out there that is not a nine or 10 in your bodies, or let's say you're not an eight, nine or 10, right? You are average, you are mediocre, you are living below your potential. If that's you and your fitness, I have a trick for you that I'm gonna share. I use this same trick on my business, right? So 90 days ago, I hired a mentor that has, you know, essentially they're the OGs of this industry and they had a tool that they wanted me to utilize, which essentially was a daily profit and loss statement. And of course, anybody that's a business owner, you have your different financials and sometimes chances are you, you look at them on a monthly basis. Maybe you don't look at them until the year goes by, or maybe you don't even look at them and you're just, you know, like I ran my business for a long time. You just essentially know if there's money in your bank or there's money not in your bank. Right. And so as I've wanted to scale this company and we've scaled, I was like, I need to know how to scale. And my mentor says, great, we're going to go through daily profit and loss statements. And I'm like, okay, cool. This is going to be awesome for me to learn. And then I realized that I didn't love what I saw. I realized that I thought that we were doing way better than we actually were, especially on a daily basis. And so I had this, I had this delusion, but it wasn't like, I, I, I didn't have the tools yet of understanding on how to face this delusion. And so for some of you, you don't have the tools yet to face it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one for your body in a second. So what happened was every single day, I would look at this daily profit and loss. And every single day, it would not make me feel very good. It would make me want, I was getting competitive with this dashboard. And so every single day that I didn't like what I saw, my tendency was to not want to see it. My tendency was to not want to look at it. My tendency was to be like, ah, I already know what's going on. Like, I'll look at it. I'll fill it in next week, right? I'll fill it in next month. And I fought that tendency because I, I had paid for this mentorship. And this was one of the things that, that was taught to me. And so every single day I would look at it every single day, I wouldn't love it. And then every single day I'd get in this massive action taking mode to get better on a micro level day after day after day. And so this process has played out in 90 days. And I can tell you this, I've never been more productive in a 90 day period than I've been this last 90 days. I've never been more creative in creating things from a marketing standpoint, from a team standpoint, from a product standpoint in this last 90 days, because as I saw what I didn't like and I faced that demon every single day, I had to create and I had to improve in order to fix it. And so I had this conversation with one of my one-on-one -on -one clients the other day. And this one-on-one -on -one client has been essentially just kind of living below his potential, right? He's an underperformer. And as I'm speaking to him, I'm like, you know, it's the same story every two weeks when we talk. And every story is like, you know, John, this happened. I'm not making excuses, but then there, but then there's that but, right? And so it's like, what comes after the but? And I said, great. I'm like, here's the deal, man. I'm like, I need you to take a picture before you go to bed every single night, you're gonna take a picture in your, like just in a swimsuit or, or your shirt off, you're gonna take a picture, you're gonna stare at yourself, you're gonna snap that picture, and then you're gonna look at it. And I want you to ask this one question, is this my best? Does this photo represent the best that I could do? And anybody, any single one of you watching me right now, if you are mediocre in your body, I promise you this will change the game for you. Every single night, not, not, not once a week, not once every two weeks, not I forgot about about it, but every single night you take this picture and you ask yourself this one question, is this the best representation of me that I could possibly put on display for myself and the world to see? And if it's not, guess what happens? Maybe you hate that motherfucking picture every night, but guess what? You're, fo you're focused, you're focused in on wanting to change it, right? And so I don't want you to dwell on it, but I want you to look at it and then guess what happens the next day? What happened in my business is I went in massive creative mode and I got really 
focused to do what I'm about to tell you next, which is step number two, which is win the day, right? So after I got focused on it, then I focused my attention on winning the day. You might not like the picture you see tonight, but if you have a plan and it's omnipresent in your mind that you don't like what you see, then you are immaculately focused on what you have to do and to follow the plan the next day so that day after day after day, you see these tiny little improvements. And the only thing that you can control at that point is whether you won the day or lost the day. And so step number one is to face your demons daily. And then step number two is win the day. You just have to make improvement because guess what? The days are going to pass. And so 90 days goes past rapidly. And so if you do this in a fitness sense for 90 days, guess what happens? You're immaculately focused on what you want to change. And because it's omnipresent in your mind, you win the next day. And because you keep stacking wins day after day, 90 days happens and you are a different person because you kept it omnipresent in your mind. Because what do mo most people do? They don't want to step on that scale. They don't want to see the number. They don't want to see that image reflecting back at them in the mirror. They definitely don't want to take a fucking picture that reminds them of it. So if you want to be a champion, this is the steps that you go through. You face the demons and then you win the day. And then the last one, you persist until you succeed. You persist until you succeed. When it comes to fitness, there is no there is no I won. It's an ongoing game. I started when I was 16 and I'm still going at almost 40. If you are starting at 40, there is no win at 90 days or a year from now or two years from now. This is micro improvement every day. I will persist until I succeed. That means in fitness, I will persist until I take my last breath. And so there's that three-step process that will destroy the delusion that lives inside of you. And I'm telling you, delusion is the enemy's greatest weapon in me and in you. So if you're gonna succeed at the highest level, you have to rip the delusion out of your eyes, you have to rip the delusion out of your heart, and you have to rip the delusion out of your soul.